In today's video, we'll check out the progress of recent 2023 MLB first round draft picks as the minor league season comes to a close. First things first, I'd love to acknowledge two late round draft picks who have excelled and are being considered for the best draft performances this year. Brian Calmer was drafted in the 18th round by the Cubs out of Gonzaga and is tearing it up at the plate. After just three rookie ball games, he earned a promotion to low A, where he hit 358 with 10 home runs and 40 RBIs. His season OPS is over a thousand and he's tied with Wyatt Lankford for the most home runs amongst this year's draft picks. Trevor Werner was drafted in the seventh round by the Royals out of Texas A&M and is lighting up the minor leagues. Despite still being in low A, he's posted impressive numbers, hitting 354 with eight home runs and 36 RBIs in just 31 games. Across two levels, he's racked up 12 doubles and has an OPS over 1,100. Let's now break down the first round draft picks. I think it's only right we start off with the trio of Mariners who've led the low A Modesto Nuts to the first California League title since 2017. Johnny Farmelo had a delayed start to his pro career but notched his first home run. Meanwhile, Ty Pete and Colt Emerson had explosive debuts. Pete closed out the regular season on a high note with a six-game hitting streak. He also showcased his versatility playing all over the infield as he hit 283 with two home runs and 20 RBIs across two levels. Given the infield depth within the organization, Pete's ability to develop his skills across different positions will be a pivotal step in his journey towards making an impact in Seattle. Colt Emerson was absolutely extraordinary ordinary this season as he finished with a 374 batting average and had an OPS over a thousand. His August performance was exceptional hitting 536 and carrying that momentum into the playoffs. During the postseason he hit a ridiculous 550 and had a 1291 OPS. In the championship clinching game he delivered a four hit four RBI performance helping secure the title. And now we jump into the 28th overall pick and that's 21 year old Bryce Matthews. Now this pick by the Astros raised some eyebrows when he was selected however Matthews was solid in his final year in Nebraska after he put up a 2020 season. Unfortunately, this hasn't translated to Pro Bowl as Matthews has struggled, especially with his approach, something that was a big concern coming into the draft. He spent the majority of his season in low A and has struck out over 32% of the time. Across two levels, Matthews played in 31 games, hitting 208 with four home runs and 11 RBIs, and had an OPS of 717. Aiden Miller made his professional debut nearly three weeks after the draft and quickly proved rookie ball was no match. He would go on to hit 414 in 10 games and was was quickly promoted to low A Clearwater. However, he did look a little overmatched against more advanced pitching and finished his A ball season hitting 216 in 10 games. Miller did end the year hitting 303 with a solid 804 OPS. He didn't have a long ball during the regular season but saved those theatrics for the postseason as he went yard for his first professional home run to seal a 2 1 playoff victory. With the 26 pick, the Yankees selected George Lombard Jr. and he did get a late start to his pro career as he started in mid August. After just four rookie ball games, he was promoted to low A and hit 311 across both levels with an OPS over 800. Lombard only appeared in 13 games but had a very encouraging 13 walks. We now crack the top 25 with Dylan Head of the Padres. Arguably the fastest player in the draft, Head got out the gate quickly and started his rookie ball career on a 9 game hitting streak. Although he faced some challenges early on after being promoted to single A, he turned things around significantly. After a 2 for 23 start to end August, he went ballistic in September and hit 355 while hitting safely in all 7 games. He did not commit an error in over 200 innings in center field. The Braves landed a project in Hurston Waldrop out of Florida and the organization seems to have already made an impact. Waldrop's first pro appearance came in low A where he struck out 8 hitters in 3 innings and right away was sent to high A. It was more of the same and across 12 innings he struck out 17 and hitters hit 100 off the righty. This earned him another promotion this time to triple A and it's just been more dominant. This time he went 4 and a third and gave up no runs on 4 hits and punched out 5 hitters. The only massive concern is his his walks as he's allowed more than three walks in half of his appearances. However, he's managed to escape without damage. The Guardians landed a bat first catcher in Ralphie Velasquez and he certainly lived up to that reputation during his brief rookie ball stint. Velasquez was finally assigned in early August and only played in six games. But the more encouraging thing is he hit safely in all six of those while hitting 348 over that stretch with two home runs and eight RBIs. Chase Davis aka Baby Cargo was known for his big time power potential coming out of college but we've seen a completely different different ball player since turning pro. Considered one of the more polished hitters in the draft class, Davis spent the entire season in low A but struggled significantly. He hit just 212 with no home runs in 34 games. The biggest concern coming out of college were the strikeouts and that persisted as he struck out nearly 32% of the time against lower level pitching. He was hitless in 18 of his 34 games and ended the season with a slugging percentage of 269. The Blue Jays opted to give 17 year old Arjun Namala a taste of pro ball as he played in only 9 games this season. This 
despite having a less than stellar 200 average and 25 at bats, Namala demonstrated an elite ability to draw walks, racking up 14 during this short period. Braden Taylor, a standout from TCU, made history as the first position player from the school to be selected in the first round. Following a brief three-game rookie ball stint, Taylor earned a promotion to low A, where he spent the remainder of his season. He concluded the year hitting 242 with five home runs and 15 RBIs, and had an OPS approaching 900. Brock Wilkins set the ACC record for career home runs with 71, and has been solid so far this season. All it took was seven rookie ball games, and Wilkins skipped right over low A and spent the majority of his season in high A. He finished the year with a promotion to double A and finished the season hitting 285 across three levels, while hitting five home runs and driving in 29. Wilkins is a bat that could realistically be in Milwaukee's lineup next season. The Orioles drafted the exceptional defender and speedster Enrique Bradfield Jr. from Vanderbilt. All he's done is put his talents on display across three different levels in 25 games. Maybe the most shocking thing is we actually saw Bradfield make an error this year in the outfield, something he didn't do at all last year in Vandy. Bradfield has been consistent this year, racking up 25 steals in 25 games as he ended the season hitting 291 with an 802 OPS. Bryce Eldridge, often referred to as the American Otani, had an impressive season this year. He displayed his power primarily in rookie ball, hitting five home runs, and his overall season stats included a 294 batting average with six home runs and 18 RBIs. For those wondering, Eldridge has yet to make a pitching appearance, focusing solely on his hitting. Jacob Gonzalez, once the preseason number one shortstop in college baseball, had a strong junior season. However, his success has yet to transition to the professional level. Like many first round prospects, he was quickly promoted to low A after a few rookie ball games. Unfortunately, in his 30 low A games, his performance has been abysmal as he's hit 207 with a 589 OPS. Also in the field, he made six errors at shortstop after being sure handed in college. Gonzalez ended August strong and looked like he could turn things around. However, he struggled again in September and finished the month hitting 143. The Red Sox struck gold when Kyle Teal fell into their lap and his performance has been nothing short of incredible. Teal's hitting has been relentless after a brief three game stint in rookie ball. He skipped low A and played 14 games in high A where he batted a whopping 377 with a 938 OPS. His journey continued to double A for the season's end where he hit 323 with a 946 OPS in nine games. He finished the season hitting 363 across three levels with two home runs and 22 RBIs. He went on to draw 22 walks, had six doubles, and an OPS nearing 1,000. What's more impressive was his showing behind the plate as he threw out nearly 70% of would-be base stealers, and it's safe to say the Red Sox landed a gem. Matt Shaw won the Brooks Wallace Award for the best shortstop in college baseball and hasn't disappointed up to this point. After playing just three rookie ball games where he went 4 for 8, Shaw was swiftly promoted to high A where he terrorized pitching hitting 393 over 20 games. He continued to hit in double A and batted 292 in 15 games. In the end, he wrapped up the season hitting 357 with 8 home runs and 28 RBIs. His 1018 OPS ranked second amongst hitters drafted this year with a minimum of 150 at bats. Tommy Troy of the D backs played across two levels during the season and ended his year playing in high A. He finished the season with a 271 average with four home runs and 21 RBIs. However, it came to light that Troy suffered a foot fracture and underwent surgery. Troy later revealed that this injury originated from a hit by pitch he endured back in March but played through it. Nolan Shanuel had an incredible junior year at FAU batting 447 and leading the nation in on-base percentage. His success seamlessly transitioned to pro ball and it only took 22 minor league games before Shanuel made his big league debut. Since his arrival, he's been nothing short of outstanding, currently holding a 26 game on base streak, and he recently made Major League history after his 25 game on base streak was the youngest for any player 21 years or younger to start off their Major League career. It appears the Halos have found their future leadoff man for years to come. Before breaking into the top 10, the seventh overall pick, Rhett Lauder, was assigned to high A with the Dayton Dragons, the Reds high A affiliate. However, he did not make any appearances this year, and it was announced that he was placed on the development list, which allows players to be with the club and work out but not participate in game action. The same goes for the Rockies' ninth overall selection, Chase Dolander, who was assigned to rookie ball but didn't throw a single pitch on the season. We cracked the top 10 with Noble Meyer, who was widely regarded as the top high school pitching prospect in the draft and showcased his talent this year by striking out 15 hitters in 11 innings. He split his time this season between rookie ball and low A. Although he faced some command issues, this season appears to be more about getting his feet wet as next season we could see a big step in his development. The Royal selection of Blake Mitchell came as no surprise as he had been on their radar for months. As the top high school catcher in the country, Mitchell is seen as a potential successor to Salvador Perez. Although he struggled in his 13 rookie ball games hitting just 147, he did show an impressive ability to draw walks totaling 
17 during that stretch. He also threw out 79% of would-be base dealers behind the dish. The A's were rumored to be considering backstop Kyle Teal or Grand Canyon shortstop Jacob Wilson, and they eventually went with Wilson. Known as an elite contact hitter in college, Wilson had an impressive start to his rookie ball season as he notched five ribbies in his first three games before earning a promotion to high A. While power was a question mark, he displayed significant gap-to-gap -gap power hitting 11 doubles in just 26 games. Wilson finished the season hitting 333 and 99 at-bats with one home run and 13 RBIs and had an OPS approaching 900. Unfortunately, his season came to an end after he went flying into the stands on a defensive play. Walker Jenkins made a statement with his first season and showed his bat is super advanced for his age. He went on a start in rookie ball and hit 333 in 14 games and matched his first two home runs. He eventually earned a promotion to low A and went ballistic hitting nearly 412 games and had an OPS over 1,000. He hit safely in 23 of the 26 games he played this year and ended the season hitting 362 across two levels with three home runs and 22 RBIs. The Tigers opted for the high school route allowing standout Florida outfielder Wyatt Lankford to fall to the Rangers. Lankford has not only excelled but he's had arguably the best season of any player selected in the draft making a strong case for one of the top performers in the minor leagues during his 44 game stretch. After dominating the lower levels of the minor leagues he reached double A and hit a ridiculous 4 or 5 and the Rangers eventually promoted him to triple A. Lankford has also exhibited elite walk rates and has walked nearly 21% of the time across double and triple A. Across all levels this season he's hitting 360 with 10 home runs, 30 RBIs and an OPS over 1100. What's even crazier is his on base percentage is approaching 500. One significant differentiator between Lankford and Dylan Cruz was their defensive capabilities and Lankford has proven that he can be more than serviceable in the outfield. He's played the majority of his games in left field and even played two games in center field, logging over 275 innings in the outfield without making a single error. The Tigers' Max Clark got his feet wet this season as the 18-year-old played across two levels reaching low A and hit 224 with two home runs and 19 RBIs. Assigned to rookie ball to start the season, he showed why he's one of the best young talents in the game. He hit 283, had four doubles and 12 ribbies in just 12 games. After his promotion, he slowed down a little during his final month of the season and the strikeout started to pile up. However, he showed a fantastic eye drawing eight walks in his final six games. On the defensive side, he did not make an error in over 189 games played in center field. Dylan Cruz basically forced his way into Washington and jumped out the gate hot. It took one rookie ball game to land in low A and he mashed hitting 355 in 14 games with five home runs and 24 RBIs. During this stretch, he had a four hit game and a five hit game where he had two home runs and drove in six. The Nationals decided to send Cruz to double A for the final 20 games of the season and this is where his fatigue showed. But keep in mind, Cruz played a 71 game college season. In double A versus more advanced arms, he struggled hitting just 208. Now Dylan Cruz did play his whole college career in center field, but this year he played all over the outfield. And we actually witnessed something we haven't seen in a very long time, and that's an outfield error, although it was in left field. With the number one overall pick, the Pirates selected Paul Skeens, and there was big time speculation he might skip the minors entirely. But the Pirates decided on a more cautious approach for their future race. He pitched in a total of six and two thirds of an innings across three levels, striking out 10 hitters. His inflated ERA can be attributed to his first double A start, where he didn't make it out of the first inning, allowing four runs on three hits and walking two. Overall, this season was about Pittsburgh introducing Skeens to the ropes, and next season we may witness him progress rapidly through the system, potentially making his way to Pittsburgh by midseason.